I was gonna teleport into the shop, but I'm too lazy to do that, so I just walked into the frame. Hey, what's going on, internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we recently have made a short film called Rafe, which we posted about a week ago. If you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to check that link in the description. You can watch our full short film. But in this short film, we had a lot of VFX, and one of these VFX was specifically teleporting. Plus, I'm a little bit lazy to come up with something original right now, so we're going to talk about creating an awesome teleporting effect inside of After Effects. And this isn't like any other teleporting VFX tutorial out there because we're gonna be working on a, kind of what would be a complicated shot because for example, in our main tutorial shot, we're gonna have someone teleport into the shot and teleport someone else out of the shot. So I gotta talk about how we block that out and obviously the VFX of that shot and also adding camera shake into it. And before we move into our video, I wanna give a quick shout out to Envato Elements. You know what I dislike as a content producer? Having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage music for my videos, After Effects templates, and graphic design templates for my business. With Envato Elements, I can save a ton of money for my business by spending only $16.50 a month where I can download unlimited music, After Effects templates, stock footage, and so much more for my business needs. If you want to learn how you can save countless time and money, be sure to check our links in the video description, which will take you over to Envato Elements. All right, so here's the shot we'll be doing our teleporting effects on, and after this, we'll talk about a few other shots quite briefly. Uh, but if you want to download this clip, I'll drop a link in the description. It won't be off my website because the downloads on my website is currently down. We're working on it, but I want you to be able to follow along. Look at the markers here in the timeline. So I have it indicated where the shot actually starts, so I know, hey, this is where we're going to start doing our effects, and this is where the shot ends. Keep in mind that you're going to want to keep the camera on a tripod to do this, and you're not going to want to touch the camera whatsoever. So after you film your action, don't hit stop, keep rolling, tell your actors to clear frame, and you have this nice clean plate. And this is what we absolutely need to have. So what we're going to do here is just trim the beginning of our shot right here to the beginning of our After Effects timeline. Then we'll come to where we're ending our shot, we'll go up to Edit Split Layer. And we can just drag our endpoint in, and there's our clean plate. And then we'll bring this layer underneath our original shot, and boom, we'll put that right there. Awesome. And we'll rename Slayer to Clean Plate. And I'm just going to trim down my timeline just to keep things simple. So, boom. So now there's our actual shot. And in the shot, we're going to have our antagonist right here teleport into the shot. And he's going to grab our talent here. And they're both going to teleport out of the shot. So, first thing we need to do is get our antagonist out of the shot. And you got to make sure that no one is touching each other. So, right here is a good time when he comes right into the shot. So, so first what we're going to do is grab the pen tool and mask around our talent and they'll be isolated into their own layer like this. And one thing you want to do is hit F and keyboard for feather and just feather this out. Awesome. Then what we're going to want to do is duplicate this layer and I'll rename this layer to the name of our talent. Boom. And I'll hit MR keyboard and delete that mask. So boom, he's just going to be right there. So I want to determine when he's going to be completely out of the frame. So I'll drag this endpoint in on his clip. So now boom he just pops in and almost by itself that's an okay effect but you can see boom pops in and we'll have him pop out so what we'll do here is we'll drag the out point of the top clip here so boom he pops in the shot and we teleport out now we have a little bit of a masking issue right here which we need to fix you know after he's been in the shot we can hit mr keyboard for mass path add a keyframe for it and right when they're supposed to teleport out we'll just move the mask over here so with our mask in place and our main teleporters out of the shot, we are able to now apply our effects and everything is set up from here. It's pretty easy to do this. It's got to make sure that none of the actors, but one thing you absolutely got to make sure when you're filming this is that none of the actors are going to be touching each other in the frame. So for example, we could not have them overlapping with our talent Erica or she would have been teleported out too technically. So you see that we have this gap between them so we can cleanly teleport them out. See Franklin comes in, it's a clean teleportation. He grabs Tatum and then they teleport out cleanly. So absolutely make sure that none of the talent is touching each other you know, within the frame. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply some quick effects to this and make this look really good. So I wanna analyze a few frames here, like three or four frames, and I want him to have a little bit of a you know, teleportation effect. And that's why we're here in this tutorial. So what we need to do is paint him out. So what we'll do is grab the roto brush here at the top and we'll double click our composition. And I'll just move past just a couple frames here. So right here is when the effect will end. What I need to do is go up to window brushes. If you don't see that window, it'll be over here on the right. 
we can lower down the diameter of the brush and we can just start painting you know our talent in here hold down alter and keyboard to deselect anything that's not supposed to be selected and it's just a quick way for us to you know mask them out of the shot so we can apply some quick effects and it's not going to affect anything else so just hold down alt make it as clean as you can um this has to be 100 percent perfect because you know it's only a few frames but the more accurate you are the nicer the effect will look so we'll call that there and since we did it at the last frame you can do it at the beginning of the, at the beginning frame or the last frame but we'll just move back just a few frames here we'll let roto brush analyze and we'll see what we got here so that's okay so one thing we'll do is come here to feather and we'll set the feather to like 80. all right we'll come back here to our original composition and see it's just a little bit weird so you can come here to like uh, shift edge and you can increase that by a little bit and you know you get something like that scrub here by a few frames and we will split this layer by going to edit split layer and we'll delete the actual roto brush on that top layer so it's only gonna be affected here and then it's back to normal and we'll talk about that in a second so I rename this layer to Franklin VFX name of our talent awesome so now we can apply some effects to this. <clears throat> so when we're coming up with this effect, we wanted to come up with our own, you know, physics, you know, for this effect. And one thing we came up with uh, was that all the atoms were coming together. So we used an echo effect. So we'll go to effect, time, and we'll grab echo. First things first, let's go to the echo operator and let's set this to composite in front. You can also take a look at composite in back. It's just going to depend. Okay. So first we'll come here to decay and let's set this down to like 0.6 and starting intensity can be like a 0.8 or something, maybe 0.7, that's fine. Then we set our number of echoes to like three. So you can see there's more duplicates of our talent. And the top parameter here, echo time per seconds, just says how, you know, how long ago this actually took place. So you know, if you really increase the number, you probably won't, you know, see what I'm saying, it gets crazy. So you wanna keep this number relatively low. So we'll do like negative 0 0.02 and you know, that's fine. So now it comes in, boom, back in frame like normal. The only thing we'll do is go to effect, blur and sharpen, and we'll grab CC radial fast blur. And this will add a nice little bit of blur here. We can bring down the amount to like 30, don't want it anything too crazy. And I'll set the zoom to brightest. And one thing we want to absolutely do is make sure we hit T on keyboard for opacity for this layer, add a keyframe for it, set this forward maybe by two frames and bring the opacity down 0%. So he doesn't just abruptly pop in there. So now, boom, he pops in the frame. At least we did like a little bit of work there. It's nothing too crazy. And then we can pop him out of frame. But to help sell this teleporting in effect a little bit better, I want to just obviously warp the area a little bit. So we'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And we'll go up to effect, distort, and we're going to grab uh, the mesh warp. And I'll lower down the rows and columns to maybe like four. So we want to distort the area of the shot when our talent teleports. So what we'll do, is we'll add a keyframe for distortion mesh, but you are on keyboard to bring up the keyframe. We can like move it over by a little bit. And right at the peak of where he comes in, which will be right here, we will start distorting our composition. So first of all, let's actually add like a few more columns in here. And then we can kind of distort this area of the composition by a little bit. And just kind of randomly moving these points over. And then we'll copy that first keyframe, go to the you know, go forward by a few frames, paste that in there so it returns back to normal. And make the middle keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. So now we have this teleporting in and maybe it's a little bit abrupt. So of course, make sure to, you know, just make it subtle. Don't do anything too insane. Anything that's going to take the viewers out of your shot. So it's very subtle, but it obviously adds just a little bit of extra teleporting to the shot. So we obviously have when he teleports out, we want to leave a few frames here. So you know right here we have a few frames of work so we'll go up to edit split layer and we'll rename this to uh, vfx out so as before we're going to do the same exact techniques we're going to grab the roto brush grab our talent and paint them for a few frames and that's fine go back to our composition layer we'll set the feather to 80 and make any changes to the shift edge so that's fine I think that's good perfect and then obviously the save time since we've already did this we can go back into our original vfx layer copy the echo and the radial fast blur and just paste it to our and as before we'll hit tr keyboard for opacity and at the last frame here we'll add a keyframe for opacity move that 
keyframe forward, maybe by like two frames, and see the opacity down 0%, so there's a nice subtle fade out. So now, boom, grabs and leaves frame. And it's a very subtle effect, and actually I might dial down the fast blur here. It's a little bit too much for me. And then I'll just quickly animate the mesh warp again. So here, with everything put together, here's our effect, and you know, obviously you want to work on the timing of everything, but it's essentially how we can put it together, but there's a few other concepts I want to put back in here. So first of all, what if you need to add camera shake back into this because we shot this on a tripod? Obviously you're probably not going to do any crazy dolly moves or anything, but we needed to add camera shake back into this. So what we did to fix this is I grabbed all of our layers, went to layer pre-compose, and you know, we can call it teleport one or whatever you have in the sequence. And one thing we can do is hit P on keyboard for position, I'll click the stopwatch for that position and type in wiggle, open parenthesis, two comma 100, close parenthesis. And then make sure to just scale into your image by a little bit. So make sure you shoot it wider than you need it to be. And if there's anything that's too much, just go to effect to store and we'll add transform. And we'll add a keyframe for position. And I'll just bring up the Y position, you know, right there. So we're not clipping anything. So once you have everything kind of settled out with your transform, here's what we have. We add our camera shake back into our shot. It's nice and crazy for what we were doing. Um, and that's how you can put together a more advanced style of shooting teleporting effect. All right, so here's another more complicated shot to do. And I just want to briefly talk about how this is done. So what's more complicated about this shot than the previous one is that after our talent teleports away uh, the bat goes flying where she used to be so in order to shoot this correctly you have to shoot both of these actions separately so for example you have actor one act out their action as you see boom she jumps out of the frame she teleports and then, and then you have actor two act out their action and then you combine both of these shots in post-production with a mask and make sure you absolutely get a clean plate. So that concludes our teleporting tutorial. Hope you found this video helpful and are able to take away some awesome techniques from this. So good luck to implementing this on your own short films and projects. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.